Hey, this is Jeremy Farley. I'm the pastor of Restoration Church in Whitfield, Virginia. This is a church that we actually planted, my family and I, in 2019, and it is right now July of 2022. We started with just my family and I, five of us, and the Lord has really been good to us and let us see this church now get to about 75 on average attendance every Sunday morning. And I want to take a moment and launch this channel here for the sole purpose of trying to help other church planners. I, I'm just very simple in my speech, and I wish I had more of a video editing skills to make this video more exciting. But what I wanted to do is take some of our experiences and share them with you so that if you're looking at planning a church or maybe excited about that or in the process of doing that, you know, share some of the things we've learned from this, and hopefully you can be benefited from it as well. Uh, to give you a real quick background on myself, I grew up in this area here, Withville, Virginia. It's in Southwest Virginia, where Interstate 77 and 81 come together and merge. It's a town of about eight or nine thousand people, and the county around us here has thirty thousand residents. So it is rural America, and it is right in the heart of the Bible Belt. And whenever we started this church, there were a lot of people saying, "Why in the world do you start a church in the Bible Belt?" But the reality is, I believe with all my heart, if there was ever a time in our nation's history that we need new churches, it is today. Uh, we are plagued in this country by a whole lot of aging churches that have very, very little excitement in them, very, very little life in them. And a lot of times I've heard it said like this, it is easier to give birth than it is to resurrect the dead. And so there is a need for church planning. There's a need for church restoring. There's a need uh, to take some dying churches and get them back up to life again. But for us, our calling was to plant a church in our hometown. And I want to go through this video series and just share different things that we've learned along the way. And hopefully it can be a blessing to you as a church planner. Uh, today, I want to focus primarily on just the prerequisites. If you're interested in starting a church, what are some things you need to know before you even get involved in it? And at the very top of that list, I would say this, you have to have a family commitment. If you're going to plant a church, there has to be a family commitment there. It can't just be you by yourself and maybe your spouse isn't fully on board all the way down to your children. Your children have to be excited about it. This church that we have today, this church that God has brought together would not have ever made it to where it is today were it not for my wife and my children having not only my vision but having their own vision for this as well. And so the very top of the list, the very first thing I would say is that outside of God leading you to do that, obviously, that goes without saying your family has to be on board. This ministry, simply put, would not exist were it not for my family. And the reason for that is because it's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require time of your spouse being away. It's going to require uh, you not being there for every family event and every family function. Now, we try to manage our time as best we can so that we, we can be a blessing and a benefit to our family. But ultimately, at the end of the day, church planning is taxing on the entire family. And right off the bat, if your family is not on board and, and your family is not willing to make those sacrifices, uh, I would find a new calling. I would find a new profession to be in, really, because you can't make it as a church planner without your family. It is a family effort. Second thing that I would say as a church planter going into it, some prerequisites to expect, is you need to expect some criticism. You need to brace yourself for naysayers. Uh, why in the world are you going to start a church here in the Bible Belt whenever there's so many churches um, that are without a pastor or so many communities without even a church? Why start a church? And I remember whenever we started here in our community, there were a whole lot of people that gave us a lot of flack over it because there are churches already here. But for our family, we could not find that place. I'm not saying that there aren't good churches in this community, but we couldn't find that place where we felt like God wanted us to be. And as I got talking to people and as I, I started ministering to different people in this community, I realized there are a whole lot of people in this area that have been longing for a church doing what we're doing, and yet there wasn't such a place in existence until we got here. And I say that to say there will be naysayers. There will be people saying that you're picking the wrong time to start the church, that you're doing it the wrong way, that your name isn't the right name, or your denomination isn't what it ought to be. And the reality is, as a church planner, you have to be ready for that criticism and you've just got to take it and keep on going. Uh, let none of these things move you, as a matter of fact. Uh, you have to know what your vision is, and you have to run with that vision, and it doesn't matter who's opposed to you. If God has given you a vision, you need to do it. And as a church planner, I would just say this to you. Uh, be ready, be expecting, bracing yourself 
for naysayers to come because you're going to run into them. You're going to have people that you love dearly that are going to criticize what you're doing and even oppose it. And the sad reality is that's just the church planning business. And I hate to use the term business there, but that is we're busy about God's business. And God's business has always had detractors, even well-meaning people. And you're going to find that as well in church planning. The thing I would say is that it is critically important that you connect to that area. Uh, if you have a background in that area or you have an existing relationships in that area, your job is going to be that much easier. For me, whenever we became church planners in this, I had served as Wythe County's tourism director for several years. And I had worked in local government for quite some time. And so I had a lot of existing relationships already here, not to mention I had lived in this area since I was two years old. And so for us, planning this church and this community was fairly easy in that respect because I had so many relationships that people I played t-ball with in kindergarten, high school teachers, and so many different others that uh, I grew up in this area and every aspect of my life I was working with these people. And whenever we started, a lot of those former people that I knew that maybe I had lost touch with started coming into this place. And I, I now pastor uh, people that I, I went to school with. I now pastor people that I work Worked with as a teenager and I pastor people that I knew very distantly who were family friends years and years ago and so with that being said uh, you the more relationships you have in an area the easier your task is going to be now we don't choose the task that is easiest we choose the task that God has called us in but many times God will equip you before he calls you into that and Paul the Apostle wanted nothing more than to plant a church in Rome and yet he was a Roman citizen. God had already laid out those relationships for him before he ever even realized what he was going to be doing. And I say that to say, if you're planning a church, you need to build relationships as quick as possible. I was fortunate God opened up several doors so that I could serve on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and have relationships with local businesses. And we're still seeing payoffs from those relationships even now. And so I, I would urge you, to build relationships. I pastored in a community uh, before I came here that was about an hour away. And I never, nothing really ever took off there in that ministry. We grew some and we saw some people come to Christ and saw people get baptized, but nothing really ever took off there. And one of the reasons I believe is that I never really got in that community. It was a little rural community here in rural Virginia. And I never really entrenched myself into that community. And if you're going to pastor in an area, Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 3 that the minister or the bishop must have a good reputation of them that are without. Uh, you have to be known in the community. Uh, the Great Commission is all about forming bonds. The Great Commission is all about forming relationships. One thing that I also did is I officiated youth football and tried to get involved in as many different youth activities as I could. Got involved with the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And God has used all of these relationships to open up the door for us to minister. And so that's critically important. Prerequisite before you even start a church is you need to realize whether or not you have enough time to do it. Uh, you've got to free up your schedule. And that might mean that your family is going to have to make some economic sacrifices or you're going to have to have funding in place so that you can have that time. But uh, for us, I, I really, we went all in with this thing, starting the church. And God opened up doors uh, financially that we would be able to do that almost on a full-time basis. And going into this, I think I underestimated probably the amount of time that it would take uh, pastoring and being the founding pastor of a place. And so if you are looking at church planning, if you want to do it the right way, it's going to take a lot of your time. It's going to take building relationships. It's going to take staying after a service and talking with people and getting to know them and ministering to people where they are and going out and eating supper with them, inviting them to your home and just building relationships with people. And so uh, expect for this thing to be a very time-consuming venture and be willing to make that sacrifice. Be willing to offer that sacrifice of your time to the Lord. And then the last thing when it comes to church planning, what are some prerequisites that you need to have is you have got to be absolutely confident in your calling. And I say it's the last thing. It's obviously the first thing, but it is the final thing as well. At the end of the day, there will be times that you gather together and there won't be very many people there, if any. We were fortunate we've never had a service where it's just my family and I. And uh, we're at the point now where I thank the Lord with about 70, 75 people coming every Sunday. Hopefully we won't ever get to that place. But I remember many, many times, especially in the early days, 
Uh, it was a very, very slim picking type crowd, but yet I had the confidence in my heart that God had put there that we were doing what our calling was, that God had led us to start a church in this community. We started in 2019 and we had great aspirations, great plans on what we were going to do. And we had a three and five year plan that were out of this world. And then our one year anniversary, March of 2020, COVID hits. And that was our final service in the meeting center that we were renting at the time. And from there, we found ourselves homeless as a church body, uh, not having anywhere to go and started meeting out in a field all through the COVID pandemic through 2020. And God continued to grow this thing. But there were many, many times that I questioned and even others questioned out loud, did we make the right decision? And you've got to have that confidence. You're going to get naysayers. Uh, your family is going to get exhausted. You're going to realize sometimes that you don't have the time that maybe you thought you did. And that's where it, you've got to have a confidence that you are doing what God has called you to do. And so if you're church planning, I would encourage you just to go ahead and um, make up your mind that you're going to be faithful to God and realize it's going to be a costly endeavor as well. Hope this video was a help to you. I pray that it gave you some insights as far as what you can expect being a church planner. It is a hard, tough job. It requires an entrepreneurial spirit, but it also requires the Holy Spirit to make happen. And if this video was a help to you, I would ask that you just give us a thumbs up. That thumbs up would be more of an encouragement to me than you could ever realize. And then also consider subscribing. But thank you so much. We'll give you other videos here in the days ahead. And you can follow our journey as church planners.